everyone and welcome back to the Science Corner. I have a question for you. What are rocks? So in our kits, we got lots of rocks. But what are rocks and how are they made? Rocks are made out of minerals. There are only about 20 kinds of minerals that are common and only about three times more of that of common rocks. So we're gonna check out some of our rocks today. For today's activity, we're going to be geologists. A geologist is someone who studies the earth. They study rocks, minerals, and how the rocks are formed. They also sort rocks by hardness, color, and luster. So, you will need your science kit today. Go ahead and grab your list of supplies. Turn to investigation one. You will need your science notebook, your set of six rocks, You will need your sheet of black paper and your sheet of white paper, your hand lens, and also some of your word wall words. Today we're going to be using geologist, rock, sand, and weathering. Once you have those things out, go ahead and move your kit to the side. Don't forget to grab your pencil so we can use it to take notes. So the first thing we're going to do is check out the objects we have in our bag. What are these? Well, they're rocks. Remember I said rocks are made out of minerals and that geologists sort them by toughness and texture? So what differences do you see in these rocks? I see I have three different sets of two. I have two of these red ones. They're really rough and if I rub them, it, kind of feels like little pieces are coming off. I have these light colored ones that are kind of pinkish or orangish. They are pretty smooth and they kind of feel like chalk. And then I have these other ones, these really dark gray ones, and they feel like normal rocks. They're kind of hard, a little bit cold, and they're pretty smooth too. So take a minute to observe your rocks. You can use your hand lens to check them out. I'm going to start with the red Using my hand lens, I can see there are lots of little holes in this rock. There also looks like there's little tiny bits of other things. If I rub it, like it feels kind of rough on my skin. I think this rock, it probably weighs less than these other ones too. Yeah, I think this one's the lightest rock. What questions could you ask about these, this rock? Well, what are those other things in there? What would happen if I hit this rock really hard onto something? Would it break? Would pieces come off? What if I tried rubbing it? Let's go on to our other rock. I'm gonna go on to the orange one next. This is called tough. This one feels like chalk. If I look at it, it kinda looks like chalk too. I wonder if there's tough and chalk. Maybe that's what chalk's made out of. I don't know. You can see it's getting all over my fingers, just like chalk would. And I noticed that there's like a red coating, but it seems to be maybe white underneath. I wonder if I scratched off that red coating, if it would be all white. Let's go on to our last one, our basalt. That's the really dark gray one. This one has lots of colors in it. It's super hard and feels a little bit cold. You can see it kind of looks slightly sparkly, but it also has strings of white in it. I wonder if that's because of the tough, because they were in the same bag together, or maybe it has tough in it, or maybe something else. I wonder if I could use this rock to break the scoria. Maybe. So some words we use to describe them were how rough they were, how heavy they were. We can also talk about their shape. These ones are pretty round. This one's round. This one's pointy, even though they're both tough. And the basalt's pretty pointy. Every corner seems to come to a point. I can also talk about their size. My rocks are all about the same size. However, I do have one bigger piece of tuff that's bigger than all the rest and one tiny piece of tuff that's smaller than all the rest. I wonder if that's normal. Tuff normally comes in different sizes. So what questions could you ask about these rocks? 
Well, one of the questions I had was, what would happen if you rubbed the rocks together? I wonder, if I rubbed the scoria with the other two kinds of rocks, would it be different than if I rubbed the two pieces of scoria together? So today we're going to be rubbing our rocks together. What other questions do you have about rubbing rocks? Take a minute and open up your interactive science notebook to the very first page. This page is blank. I open it up again. I can see our activity for today, rubbing rocks. On this side, where you have lines, write some questions you have about rubbing rocks together. My question was, if I rubbed the scoria with the other two rocks, what would happen? We're going to turn this into a hypothesis. Remember, a hypothesis has what is going to happen and what you think will be the result using information you already know. So I already observed my rocks. I noticed that the scoria was pretty rough, but also didn't seem very strong because I could rub pieces of it off with my fingers. So I think if I rubbed the scoria with the basalt, which is my hardest rock, that pieces are definitely going to break off and I'm going to have lots of little pieces of scoria and it probably won't do anything to my basalt because that's hard. So I'm going to write if you rub the scoria with the basalt the scoria will break because the basalt is harder. We could also make other hypotheses. What other things do you think might happen? What if you rub the tuff? I think if I rub the two pieces of tuff together that the orangish part will come off leaving white underneath because this one looks pretty white and I've used chalk before and it seems like chalk and when you rub chalk the outside comes off. So I'm gonna write If you rub the tuff together, the orange will come off. leaving it white. Because it seems like chalk. And is white underneath. All right, let's go on to our activity. For this activity, I'm gonna use my two pieces of paper and I'm gonna try rubbing the rocks together in different ways. So first I'm gonna rub my two pieces of scoria together, just a little bit, see what happens. Oh, I can see on the black paper, it looks like pieces are coming off. Let me try it on the white paper. Oh yes, definitely lots of pieces coming off and I noticed that some of these pieces are black and other pieces are red. What about with the tuff? Oh, this one's coming off really a lot and I'm noticing that it is leaving a white mark on here. Let's try it on the other paper. Wow, it's still coming off a lot. It looks the same on both papers. 
What about the basalt together? Oh, I do see that a little bit of it's coming off, but not very much. Oh, you can see it much better on the black paper. Now let's try mixing up our rocks. I'm gonna rub the basalt and the scoria together to see what happens. Oh, it looks completely different now. It kind of looks like the basalt's coming off more. Let me try it on the white paper. Ooh, a little bit of blue. Let's try the tough with the scoria. Oh, it's leaving white marks on the top on the scoria. Looks like they're both coming off, but mostly the the tough. What if I rub the tough and the basalt together? Looks like it's the tough again coming off. So let's answer this question. What happens when rocks rub together? Pieces come off. I also noticed that one of the rocks left a mark on the other one. Like, look at this piece of scoria. It has a lot of little white marks on it now. So pieces come off and it leaves marks on one rock. I'm going to put all of my my bits of rock on one paper. I'm going to put it all on the white paper. Okay. Let's take a look at this dust that came up. This like rock dust, we'll call it. It kind of looks very much like sand, except it's kind of red, probably because we used scoria, which is a red rock. But I'm thinking if this looks like this, I bet that's how sand is made. Do you know that you could make sand by breaking rocks to little bits? If rocks rub together enough, they become little tiny pieces and they become part of sand and dirt. So which rock made the most dust? Which rock made dust easiest? Right, the tough. Probably because this one is not as tough as the other rocks. Did the dust look the same on both sheets of paper? No, it was kind of hard to see the, any of the basalt on the black paper. You can see it really well on the white one. How does the dust feel in your fingers? Mine feels like chalk, probably because I was holding the tuff. But if I touch this, the sand that's left on the paper, it feels very gritty. Kind of like sandpaper or like the sand that you would find at a beach. So in nature, when rocks bang against each other or rub against each other, it's called weathering. It breaks off little bits of the rocks. So it makes big rocks become smaller and smaller. This weathering of rocks is what turns the rocks into sand by weathering them into smaller pieces. If we kept rubbing our rocks together and we just kept going and going and going and going, what do you think would eventually happen to these rocks? You're right, they would just keep getting smaller and smaller because as pieces break off the rock, they come onto the plate, which means they're not on the rock anymore. They're breaking off. So the rock is slowly becoming smaller and smaller. It might not be noticeable yet, but if we stood here and we did this all night and all tomorrow, we're definitely gonna notice a difference in this rock. If we kept rubbing in the same place, it might even leave a little dent in the rock where we were rubbing. So in your science notebook on these pages, you can write any other notes you wanted to add. You could also take a piece of tape, stick it to your sand, and then stick it in your notebook. I'm going to do that. I have my tape. I'm going to take the piece, stick it to my sand, make sure I've got lots of sand on here, and then I'm going to stick it in my notebook. There we go. Now I'll always have that little bit of sand that I made.
So who were we today? We were geologists. We were studying rocks and how they affect the sand. What were we doing? We were weathering our rocks by rubbing them together to make sand. What are rocks made of? They're made of minerals. Now that we've finished our science activity, it's time to clean up. Go ahead and grab your science kit. And you can take your sand that you made and you can either throw it away or you can get an empty vial and you can dump it in there. It's not very much, but it kind of looks cool if you hold it up to the light. Then, take your two papers, make sure that they're empty. I have a trash can here, I'm dumping everything into the trash. Add them to your papers, grab your science notebook, add that in there as well. Your um, word ball words and your investigation. I'm just gonna leave mine open, that way I know what investigation I'm on. And I'm going to double check to see what I will need for tomorrow. So for tomorrow, I'm going to need these six pieces. Oh, let me close up my sand and put that back in here. I'm going to need these six pieces again. So I'm going to keep them out on top. I'm going to need my hand lens. I'm going to make sure this is on top where I can find it. I'm going to need a cup of water. So I'm going to take my hand lens and I'm going to put it in one of my cups. That way I can grab them both easy tomorrow. I'm going to need a towel and I'm going to need word wall words. Don't forget to put your pencil back as well so you don't lose that. And I'm going to put my um, supplies list and I'm going to put that back in here too. That way everything is ready for tomorrow. That's all for today and I will see you next time in our science corner.